Hey, welcome to the behind the scenes for the homemade Thor Ragnarok trailer. You guys know Mark. He's been on this show for a couple years now. You started on the homemade Jurassic World trailer. Yes, that was my first. The many since then, I've always been kind of working behind the scenes, but now I get to actually create the show, and I'm super, super excited about it. He's taking over the show, so you guys be nice in the comments. I'm gonna be <laughs> keeping an eye on you. I'll do your worst, I don't mind. And we're in the brand new DIY workshop, so we're gonna show you how it was made. Hey, I'm a home. Hey everyone and welcome to the behind the scenes view of our homemade Thor Ragnarok trailer. Right off the bat, we needed a Thor costume. Luckily enough, Costume Squad exists. The Thor costume had a lot of different aspects to it. There was uh, the tunic itself, there was knee pads, there was wrist guards. We had to make sure and build all the elements that were presented in the trailer. So I made the club, the shield, and of course the helmet with moving parts. Before we got to the gladiator scene, there were a few shots of Thor in his more traditional costume from the previous movies. We had a Thor costume for, I believe it was Avengers Age of Ultron, so in order to update that for this movie, we made a hybrid of that costume and the new one that I made. Use the parts we like, throw away the parts we don't, and to complete the transformation, I am now Joe Dirt. So in this scene, Thor is seen throwing a hammer. So I made this hammer. Everything's pretty much made out of cardboard, I wrapped the handle with the same vinyl material that I made his uh, gladiator costume out of. I'm going to use some silver duct tape for the details, some extra brown for the strap so he can swing it. There's a computer right there. Anyway, I think we're ready to uh, destroy all of our enemies. Making homemade movies is fun, but it quickly became apparent that one man can't do this by himself. Luckily enough, I was able to partner up with John Tomlinson, who's been part of Homemade Movies for a long time. And he's doing more of the behind the scenes, camera work, and we're tag teaming this whole thing. What you doing, John? Oh, me? <laughs> I'm just setting up this sheet here on a couple stands uh, to be the background. This will be sort of the inferno that Thor is engulfed in. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe? I think you got it. <laughs> I hope so. In this scene, we see Thor in a veritable wasteland. Huge shot, big sky, a lot of elements, so we had to use force perspective. I drew out the elements that were in the scene, and we held them up close to the camera. We put the spaceships on coat hangers. We took a field trip to the park around the corner. Angela and Francesca came out and were able to move them ever so slightly in front of the camera to make them look like they were flying in the air. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Helping us out today to play Hella, we have our friend Nar. Hi, Nar. Hi! Today you will be one of the stars of this trailer. Your enemy. That's awesome. My, my enemy, yes. I'm yeah. Thor, so I guess. But in real life, we're <laughs> great friends. First thing we need to do is to get some eye makeup on you. You're good at this. I'm good at thinking. I really wanted Hella's headdress to stand out, so I made all the elements out of cardboard. I pretty much freehanded it, used one side, copied it, made them into a headdress piece, sprayed it all black, and the end result looks pretty cool. <laughs> this is so awesome. <laughs> Look at this. Yes. In this scene, Hella makes a slow motion turn towards the camera in front of a bunch of smoky mountains. So we were able to hang some bed sheets with suction cups to a glass wall and create the moon effect. Black sheets over cardboard to make it look like mountains, and then we filled it all up with smoke. Another shot with Hella, she appears to be throwing her sword into the air. John was nice enough to make the sword. And uh, this is a red letter day in history. The first time I've ever hot glued anything. What? No. I don't know. Yeah, wish me well. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. How did? How did? Yeah, I think I did it. How's it make you feel? Oh, <laughs> I didn't burn myself. I'm not kidding. Really? I really did. Look. It's a very similar setup to the other shot, so we just moved the mountains around a little bit, and then John was up on a chair pulling the sword away from her, creating the effect of her throwing it. For the rest of the shots with Hella in them, she doesn't have her headdress on. She has striking black hair, so we used a black hairspray that was able to cover up Nar's brown hair. Whoa! He's holding the whole time! In this shot, Hella is addressing the Asgardian army, and her costume is different. It has green details this time, so we took off the silver duct tape and replaced it with green duct tape. Ooh. 
In this scene, Hela is passing through some sort of golden portal. We had some golden tassel laying around, so we set that up on C stands, filled the room with smoke, and had Nar walk through. And that is a wrap on Hella. Was it fun? It was really fun. My pleasure. Okay. I'll be, uh, uh, Hella anytime. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That was a fail. Yeah. <laughs> Loves that are messing me up, really. We don't have Nar today uh, for this hammer catching scene, so Mark has painted his own thumb and he's going to be catching his own hammer in this shot. So we have a fishing line attached to the end, and Angela is going to be pulling it from that, and, and we're going to reverse the shot. Caught his own hammer. Pretty fast. Most people aren't worthy enough to even hold Thor's hammer, but Hela destroys it. For this scene, we use stop motion. We set the hammer up on a C-stand so that it wouldn't move, and we went frame by frame, drawing cracks a little bit longer each time, and the lightning elements are made out of pipe cleaners. To make the hammer explode, I actually cut it into three different pieces, we taped it back together, and then Angela and myself pulled it apart with fishing line. And John flashed a flashlight into the camera to create a big lens flare. We were supposed to get the hammer exploding in one shot. That didn't happen. So we had to put it back together a few times using scotch tape. The shot took a few different tries, but in the end, I think it was worth it. Playing Scourge today, we have our friend Derek. You may recognize Derek from Civil War. Your motivation for this character, yeah. you want things dead. Right. Got Shooting it. is a good way to make those things dead. To kill things, yeah. I think we're ready to go. First part of the costume, right. followed oh, by many goodness. more pieces. This shirt is so small, though. Because I wore this for the Black Panther uh, oh, really? shoot, <laughs> and I realized that I really needed to get into shape. The rest of Scourge's outfit is made of cardboard. I cut out the skirt and the chest piece, and then sprayed them brown, using marker for the details. Scourge is bald. Our friend Derek is not, so we put a bald cap on him. <laughs> and added the two hair elements using tape. Let's give him some gun. If you'll notice behind me, we have this super awesome homemade movie sign that Dustin made. He made it out of cardboard, spray painted it, looks amazing. It worked! <laughs> it also provided a perfect canvas that we could hang a sheet on for the background of Derek's shot. I hung up some clouds on this sheet that I spray painted to make it look like the sunset, and then we had Derek sit on a milk crate and hold his gun. In the shot, Derek is shooting some big guns with some big muzzle flares. I made them physically out of foam, and we shot the scene twice, once without and once with the flares on the guns. In the editing process, we take one frame of the shot with muzzle flares, and we place them in when you see the muzzle flares in the trailer. Okay, this is Amare. He's going to be helping us out with a couple shots today. What's up? Now we're going to have some fun, man. Hey. We just got to dress you up head to toe. Perfect. All right. Good. Ah? Good. Do you even recognize this anymore? So in this shot, I get my head cut off, which is a first for me. Uh, these little green globules of blood fly from the head after it's decapitated. So I have these uh, pieces of foam that I'm going to throw. Coming on board to play Loki is a face that everybody knows and loves, Dustin McLean. My girlfriend loves Loki, so I'm going to spend a little extra time on his costume. We got this cool chest piece, awesome shoulder pads. I'm going to spray some of them green, some of them black, some of them are going to be brown. And the back clips together using some cardboard strips. We are using a uh, mustache and beard as your hair. Perfect. Because it's the perfect length. It's a perfect fit, really. <laughs> the Loki helmet is essentially a two-dimensional helmet made out of cardboard. I sprayed it with gold, added some details with duct tape, and then bent the horns back to make it look like they were much larger than they were. In this shot, Loki flips some knives and catches them in his hands. I made the knives out of cardboard, and I added pennies to the end so that they were weighted and easier to flip. Thus making it one of the more expensive props that we've ever made on homemade movies. There's a character in Loki's shot in the background who has this really cool headpiece, and I'm going to make it out of some of the fabric that was used for Sub-Zero's costume back in Mortal Kombat. Are you a pizza? So here we have our friend Avi, who will be playing the uh, goblin character in the background of Loki's shot. Oh, there he is! I'm being styled appropriately. Makeup today was brought to you by Sharpie. As you may have noticed, our new DIY workspace is in the Mashable office. So we're able to grab some people from the office and take them to the ramp that goes along the side of the building, which leads up to the parking lot. I can direct traffic. Loki the crossing guard. It was a perfect venue for the Loki shot. I made some giant snakes out of cardboard. We set them up on some C-stands. 
And there you have it. It was a grueling five minutes, but we, we pulled together and we really made it happen. So, proud of you guys. So the shortest shot in the entire trailer probably required the most amount of work. I had to make face masks, armor pieces, swords, shields, spears, and we had four people come and help us out. We tried to fill up as much of the frame as possible, but if you blink, you'll probably miss it. I like your shield. You know, I'm wondering, is it this side or that side? Oh, Asgard guards all houses, Odin's and the White. And then it was time for miniatures, my favorite part of homemade movies. The first miniature I made was a giant scene of Asgard. So I made the castle out of cardboard, the city out of Lego pieces. I used blankets for the mountains and a coat hanger for the bridge. I'm trying to find a girl, but in G.I. Joe world, they're in short supply. We're just gonna go with this guy. Put it like that. Now she's falling through the air. Some mountains out of tin foil, which I'm gonna spray black. I made the spaceship out of cardboard, sprayed it yellow, and then added the details with red duct tape. I had some finger lights that I put in the back of it, uh, which looked really, really cool, and then I made the background out of sheets. Of all the miniatures I made, the largest one by far was the Gladiator Arena. It had to be big, we had to be able to fit a lot of different scenes within this one space. So I constructed the whole arena out of cardboard. I sprayed the entire thing with gray primer. I added red details using duct tape. I had crowd shots that I printed out from the internet that I put in the space where the fans go. And we have an arena. I couldn't do all the Thor shots, we needed a miniature. So I took a G.I. Joe and gave him a Thor costume. This is a mustachioed Thor, but you really don't ever see mini Thor from the front, so I'm gonna let it slide. Mark, stop playing with yourself. Because <laughs> he plays Thor. Yeah. We attached wires to our miniatures so that we could move them around, and we got some help using flashlights to simulate the spotlights. <laughs> For one shot, we made an even tinier version of Hulk and Thor out of paper. Then it was on to the life-size arena shots. In order to get the background for Thor's shots, I put up a bunch of bed sheets and then used red duct tape to make the details. So, I have my costume that I made for Costume Squad, rocking the whole thing. There's a really quick moving shot of Thor in the arena where he's flipping his little helmet wings down. In order to create this effect, we used rear projection, which is actually an old Hollywood technique where we shot part of the interior of the arena, put it on a television, and then I stood in front of the television and moved to simulate the camera. We're lucky enough to have a humongous giant TV here in the office. If you wanted to recreate this shot, you could stand closer to a smaller TV or use a projector. And my favorite shot of the entire trailer, the Hulk busts through a gate going into the arena. I built the whole thing out of cardboard, added some details with some masking tape. Uh, I made two different big giant doors. One is made out of foam so that the Hulk can destroy it. Uh, and in case we don't get it in one shot, I made a cardboard one that we can use over and over again. And if you go like this, they're big teeth. Playing the Hulk today, we have our lovely John Tomlinson. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? Ah! <laughs> you scared the crap out of him. While his personality is Hulk size, his body was a bit smaller than we needed it to be. So we put on this really cool muscle shirt 
and we put on a green turtleneck over that, which really made him look a lot larger. I made some armor out of cardboard. I actually feel like uh, Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now. I made the helmet out of an old bike helmet and a broom that we got from the dollar store. Eureka. Ah, that's more like Frankenstein. The Hulk's weapons were primarily made out of cardboard. He has an axe, but also a hammer. I used some Tupperware and different pieces I had laying around the office. In this shot, you have two doors. One is moving up, one is moving out. So Angela was moving the out door while Avi was moving the up door, and then Francesca threw confetti at the camera to simulate the sparks. Action Hulk! <laughs> We are supposed to get it in one take, but luckily enough, he couldn't break it, so we got a chance to try it a few times. Nobody can see us back here. We can do whatever we want. I thought it was Holland Motes, my favorite medieval rock band. <laughs> nice. What'd you do? Okay, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna go to battle first, and I'm gonna watch you from back there. That's how it's gonna go. Can I ride on the horse? You may not. Yeah! <laughs> I once caught a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those aren't sunglasses. No. Uh, and then I'm gonna uh, make some like Benihana. <laughs> Benihana. Thanks for watching the behind the scenes. Make sure you check out the links below for our homemade trailer and the side by side comparison. We'd love to hear what you thought, so please leave your comments in the comment section. We plan on bringing you a lot more of these, so uh, subscribe to Cinefix.